Okay, I'd like to uh, call a meeting to order. Lacking a gavel, you, you might be a rowdy crew and hard to control. We'll, we'll find out. Uh, I'm Doug Moldy. I'm the acting chair tonight. Uh, we'll commence. So we have a quorum at 7.05, I think. And I call this meeting to order. So the first item is, uh, would be adjustment changes or additions to our I have a couple adjustments to the agenda. Um, the fiber committee would like to make a, a brief report. Um, then I have, let's see, one removal. Uh, item two, employee compensation adjustment for completing level two road scholar training. Uh, we're actually one hour short of completing the certification for level two. Uh, so. That's going to have to be delayed until our next meeting uh, when the employee goes to one more training. You don't want to put it on at 805? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and I received an application for the Vermont Studio Center. Uh, they're asking for a noise waiver for their upcoming 35th anniversary. Okay. Uh, and one more. Uh, the Evergreen Ledge Cemetery discussion, uh, we should do that in executive session. I've got some confidential communications from our attorney. Okay. Um, the first item after that, is, anyone else have? All right. Um, next item is to is review and approve the minutes of uh, April 1st. Uh, I would like to say that Matt had suggested uh, fairly extensive changes. We don't have Eric here and Mike is late, and I wonder if we could defer this till next meeting, yes. if people would approve. I think it's a good idea. Okay. All right. Uh, Rosemary. Okay, you got your budget status report. Date for 71.16% of budget. Today we received the state aid for highways, which is included in this report for revenue. What's that good news there? And shortly we should be receiving the maintenance of grand list and um, you all go on your maintenance of grand list. I'm sorry? Should be the maintenance of grand list from the state okay. and the equalization study money. Mm -hmm. That should be coming <clears throat> any day now. Are you happy with our budget? Where we are? Yeah, so far. <clears throat> I can tell when we get done through mud season. When does the tax sale happen again? May, May 10th. May 10th. At 10 o'clock in the morning. Okay. I think there's eight properties mm -hmm. on the list. Do you have anything else for us? Yes, I've got two liquor licenses. One for Gone on River Store that's up by Northside Park. Is that one of the a catering, yeah. okay. not a catering, but a special event for the studio center for June eighth from three p.m. to nine p.m. It's an outdoor party, weather dependent. Okay. Um, Want to pass them down to? Mm -hmm. And they have had their certification for training for the. Vermont Studio Center. So I've been in touch with the Vermont Studio Center. Uh, the June 8th event is their 35th anniversary. We also have the uh, noise waiver coming up for that. Uh, it is going to be a private event. Uh, they expect it to be over at or before 9 o'clock. Uh, so they won't be serving to the general public. It'll be over relatively early in the evening uh, and really just be that one day. 
And there'll be a band or music? Is yeah, so there's going to be a band. We should do something to help them commemorate their 35th anniversary. Well, they, they did ask for a donation. Walked into it. What a softball. <laughs> Is there any motion with regard to these, individually or separately? I move the slate. Second. Discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 I just have to sign the uh, Vermont Studio Center one. You guys need to sign the guy on the one. Okay. okay. And last Friday we had our workers' comp audit and everything went well. And we should be receiving about $350 back from our premium from last year. Cool. That's all that I have. Thank you. Brian? My report's pretty standard. Um, the roads are starting to break up, but they've been fairly decent so far. We've been able to you know, get out when the weather's good and start taking care of some potholes and grade when we can, when the weather's been cooperating. The weekends, they took a little bit of a hit with the warm weather and the rain. I don't think they're going to be as bad as, as normal. And I was, I did have something to discuss, but I, I was asked to take that off. Um, so I'll discuss that at a later date. You'll see that on the bottom of the back, but we'll talk about that another time. Okay. And that's pretty much all that I have. Questions? Brian, I wanted to schedule a, um, a time for you and I to walk Old Mill Park grounds to see what you and the crew can do um, before I organize a group of volunteers to do a cleanup around the, wa the um, walking path. So you want to take a walk on the path and see like, yeah. where you're going to cut the trees mm -hmm. and where I'm going to treat it? Mm -hmm. Just to see if there's anything really major that happened over the winter. You want to give a buzz? Yeah. yeah the buzz will okay. Well. Okay. Now that the snow's Still mostly gone. Leave, I'll yeah. out when it came down. Yeah, so I'll call you. Okay. Figure out a time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there uh, any planning commission report? Oh, I have a couple questions for Brian. Okay. okay. Um, the, now that winter's subsided, maybe, starting to, um, can we, uh, I'd love to see if the test hole boring data can get do we even know what consultant that we're going to? Uh, that's on me. We're that's gonna, on you. Yeah. That's on you. Sorry. Um, okay. And the other thing was uh, you saw the correspondence with um, Sula Ring about the next EAB uh, meeting that the town's having? Yes. Okay. Is that also called RIPPT or yeah. something? Yeah. Is that the same deal? I think so. Okay. It's the regional group. Regional invasive something. Right. Yes, I plan on attending that. I think it was the 24th. 24th at 6.30, yeah. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Yeah, because I think you saw the paper recently on the News and Citizen. Like, it's definitely coming. and It'll definitely have a big impact. It is, and it's going to be it's going to be pretty large for us to deal with. Yeah. So, yeah, the more I, I, I would like to learn a little more about it, start trying to figure out a plan, what we're going to do. Good. Okay, the Planning Commission would have been... Oh, important. sorry, I have one more thing. <laughs> I, I was, didn't want to uh, draw you No, I just thought of it. Um, I think a year or maybe more ago, we talked about looking at where uh, water was pooling in certain roads in the village. Um, at the crosswalks? Yes. Yes. Is that something you can still I do? I can, I, can, I can get a map of elevations. Okay. Uh, I did look at it. I didn't make a detailed map. There's uh -huh. not a lot we can do unless we do like a reconstruction. But I can, for next meeting, I can have a, a map and show you what the issue is. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. That would be great. Because it's not very fun to navigate. No, it doesn't look very good. No. Okay, thank you. That's it. Any more questions? No. Brian? 
Mm -hmm. so, do I need to stick around for anything you're talking about? Uh, we're going to get into the road and bridge standards uh, pretty early in the meeting. So okay. Uh, okay. Why don't we go to the since we're ahead of schedule? Let's go to the uh, fiber committee report. So I'm Charlie Gallinger. Um, we want to give you a heads up that we're probably going to ask to bond. <coughs> for the construction of the fiber network in Johnson. It would be a non-recourse revenue bond. In other words, it would be a general obligation, but it does have to be authorized by the, I believe, by the electors. I'm not sure of all the details. I came here to give you a heads up. That we think it's going to cost less than a million dollars to wire the balance of the town, excluding the portion that's already wired by Comcast, but including um, Cotting Hollow Road, Sinclair Road, Rocky Road, all the rest of the town is currently wired. Uh, we've been in discussions with, with one vendor. <coughs> yeah, but they want us not to disclose too much of what we talk about, so I'm not going to disclose too much of what we talk about because I don't remember. <laughs> 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 Which makes my, you know, a non-disclosure agreement easy to comply with. <laughs> but I want to give you a heads up that it's going to be, like I said, it's going to be about a million dollars. It's going to be less than a million dollars. And it will be a revenue bond, but it will be issued by the town for a variety of reasons, primarily the tax advantages um, of that method of financing. What's the time frame for this? Well, and we think we can have the whole town wired in 35 years. We think it's faster than, than any, other, any other method of, of getting the job done. People talk about having grants available, but they're really not available. Um, notwithstanding the bureaucratic hassle of obtaining them. But they're really not available because Johnson is currently 70% wired by Comcast. And therefore, we're not considered Dark. We're, we're, we're substantially communicative. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> Is that an endorsement? Or or what? Yeah, that's, that's a one. Oh, boom. <laughs> Hardly. No, I mean, we think we do it on a, on a private basis. Yeah. And, um, okay. We would like to probably go for the bond with within a year. It does require a vote, so maybe we would hold off until town meeting, but probably would not like to wait that long. I guess I need a sense of, of the select board to go forward, otherwise we're spinning our wheels. If you think that's something that you would be very interested in considering. I'm not asking for a commitment for the much yet. I'll get to that later. Sure. So if it's wired all up through Cotton Hollow and Sinclair, who maintains it? Who bills for it if somebody wants to I mean, does that go to Comcast money? No. Um, my preference is that we would retain ownership of it, but we would have an internet service provider that would take care of all the details. They generate their revenue by charging user fees, you know, like Comcast does. It wouldn't be uh, through consolidated? No. Consolidated is uh, copper technology, not fiber. It's different. And it's, it's more on a co-op model than it is on a, a, uh, well, a publicly traded, publicly traded corporate model. When would you have more information, perhaps an executive session or something. I, I don't know what, what where we, so that we could, you know, other than operate on a trust basis. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Verify the trust. I know um, that Cotting Hollow was directed at me. You know. Yes, but, I know. Uh, <laughs> and Sinclair Road was directed at your colleague next to you. Yeah. Um, Wait, we're, but why your are neighbors you? aren't. Yeah. Well, there. Neighbors are. aren't. <laughs> no worries. Say yes about you, Nate. The other neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, we're nice and close tonight, aren't we? <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I don't have an answer. Okay. 
Duncan? Um, I'm missing Eric. Maybe you don't have an answer to any of this, but if the town is putting up a revenue bond, who's going to own it? That's, these are details that we have to do. I would like my preference having experience in the municipal built systems elsewhere that end up fostering off the context. That's not the way I want to do it. Now, I think if we finance it, we would end up owning it and leasing it to the ISP, the Internet Service Provider, the Comcast, the Fairpoint, or, or the co-op that ends up doing the job. So are you thinking a co-op model like what they have down in... Yes. Yeah. Or that? EC so, Fiber. No. EC Fiber. Yeah, so that's the same guy who was involved in Burlington Telecom. That doesn't give me a lot of comfort. Okay. Uh, EC Fiber gives me a lot of comfort. Forget the guy's name. Well, sitting here as a voter and a taxpayer, I need a whole lot more information before I was going to cast a yay vote for a million dollar bond. I understand that. I'm not asking for the million dollars today. I'm giving you every time. Well, I guess my, my, my comment is to Doug's point is when are you going to know more? I mean, it seems like there's got, to be, there's got to be a model out there that can be explained to the Taxpayers and the voters that's going to give them the level of comfort. I guess is what I'm We're going to have more details before we ask for money. We're going to have more details nailed down that we think we're going to get a grant to cover the cost. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. Um, let's see. Can we? Do you want to start up on your, uh, at 7.25, we have, we have anybody here for the Planning Commission? Uh, I can take a minute on the Planning Commission uh, to discuss the letter that we've, that I sent to the Planning Commission on the board's behalf. Okay. Um, so, uh, the, at our, meeting that we had with the Planning Commission a while ago, the uh, board had indicated that we were interested in asking the Planning Commission uh, to pursue kind of an evaluation of Class 4 road policies and updating our own Class 4 road policy. Uh, so I sent a letter to that effect to the, the Planning Commission where it detailed a little bit more about kind of what the purpose is, what our concerns are, and gave them some additional research and resources. I printed a lot of these off for them, uh, but I also included links to them in the letter just so they don't have to, they, they can get it on their own time also. Um, and we, I gave them kind of what I saw as first steps for uh, researching a little bit more about this. And, and Doug and I wrote this together, but it's the first time the rest of the board has seen it. Uh, that I think that this pretty well implements what the board had indicated though. Um, so they're going to be looking at class four roads. They're gonna evaluate kind of what the current use is, what stakeholders, uh, who's involved with it, um, what does it provide access to, both natural resources, uh, public lands, private homes, kind of everything that that road accesses, and uh, what is its impact on, uh, you know, the, the hydrologically connected segments, the, the watershed, uh, that we have to evaluate and treat. So this should give us a little bit more uh, data to work with when it comes to some of the choices we might have to make about what are we going to do with the class four roads we will retain and are there any class four roads that we don't necessarily want to retain as roads. Um, so this is 
first up, first up for them will be gathering some information, then we'll start making a report, and uh, it'll be up to the board to make a decision about um, you know, about any actual changes we might make. Um, I have taken the liberty of sending copies to Lois and, and Eric, who I spoke to about that. Did, have you looked at that letter? I guess we I don't just send it to Lois. Certainly makes sense to me. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, as a member of the Conservation Commission, I think that uh, we haven't had a chance to talk about this. But Seems like we'd like to be involved at some level on some of that um, the report based part where it relates to natural resources uh, and some of the public lands that we're too, so things like that. So at some point. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll try and, and facilitate that discussion in the connection with the language. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> select board members? Okay. Looks good. If you want a brief, uh, if, it, if you're still on planning commission, a brief SCTC. Sure. Report says I'm here. Yes. Um, so not a lot to report. Um, the subject that I think Brian's going to get into on codes and standards is something that's very much before the full LCPC board. Um, and our, at our board meeting next week, um, we're going to be discussing that and hopefully making a written um, suggestion, recommendation to VTRANS on the codes and standards. Um, the other piece that we're actively working on right now is uh, amending LCPC's bylaws. And some of those bylaws have to do with appointment of um, uh, town officers, town, town representatives to the board, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the number of county directors on the board. Um, there is some thought process of people on the subcommittees to make town appointments be uh, for a two-year period rather than a one-year period. Um, I'm wondering if you guys have strong feelings as the person, as the board that appoints the representative as to whether those should be annual appointments, reappointments, or whether they could be two-year appointments. What's the reason for suggesting a two-year appointment? Um, there are some members on the committee who feel that it's a burden to people like yourself to have to annually reappoint. Hmm. My opinion is that it's not a burden and that the appointment should be annual. Now, realizing that you can remove me or any representative anytime you want um, without cause, you can simply remove them. That is a point that some people say points to a two-year appointment being reasonable. I'd rather have the, it's not a burden to appoint annually as we appoint so many other people annually, and uh, I'd rather have that more control than less. That's, so. that's the opinion I have. Mm -hmm. Mike? It doesn't make any difference to me. One year is fine. Yeah. I seem to remember it takes right. three minutes total. What's that? <laughs> you remember for a long time, Doug? What do you think? I think there's a learning curve there. And some people learn they don't want to be on it and, 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 and retire. I, I think that uh, people. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I think that uh, people know when they don't want to be there and submit uh, their resignation. We've had trouble with people there who haven't attended meetings. We're hesitant to remove them. The removal power is, is it's not meaningless, but it's rarely used uh, as often as it should be in, in these type of circumstances. I would. Uh, I would tend to go with the two year just just to give people uh, you know, some thinking they could resign. You know, it's easier for people to resign than it is for when it, than it is likely for the town to come in and step up if they're you know, if they're finding it difficult to get there. The other thing we want to try and tighten up in the bylaws a little bit is the uh, the idea of people not attending. Um, whereby the commission would, if a member misses a certain number of meetings total during the year, 
to submit a report to the governing body, um, perhaps even suggesting, due to lack of attendance, that the person she would not be reappointed or removed. Um, I thought there were reports like that supposedly being supposed to be sent. The operative phrase there is supposed to be, and it's been more of a policy to have it rather than reflected in the bylaws. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, my suggestion is that that policy should be reflected in the bylaws. Again, it's, you know, all LCPC can do is recommend to the board, bring to your attention and recommend if you decide, you know, to leave the person in, um, that's, you know, your prerogative. Mm -hmm. There's no ability of the, of the regional planning commission to remove a member. When, when would you need a recommendation from us or is it just left up to your vote? I'm, I'm just soliciting, I'm on the bylaw committee, so I'm just soliciting your opinion because I'm here. Well, it was two in favor of one, one didn't matter, and I was really iffy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one was county directors. The way it's currently written is any municipality may have uh, up to two county directors. Um, I tend to believe that maybe there should only be one county director from each municipality, or from any municipality rather than two from a given municipality. Um, I'm getting a lot of pushback on that with people saying it's hard to get county directors and if we can get two of them from one town, we can put them in I don't know if you have thoughts about that or not. How does it work in, how does it work, is it like the Senate, you know, how does it work in balance when in the voting and stuff? The county directors are not allowed to vote on the regional plan or individual municipal plans. So their, their input really is much more general on the board. I mean, they can, they can say what they think about the municipal plan or the regional plan, but they don't actually go to vote on it. So when I was on, on LCPC, um, we were, if I had been a regional member, I, I could have voted on the important issue of like the rail trail and, and how to how to try to bring that into you know it wasn't a it wasn't a regional plan it was uh, it was really you know, uh, where the rubber meets the road for for this county so so I could have voted on that type of issue. Well, you weren't a county director. Though. No, but I said if I had been. If you had been, you could have, and you still wouldn't be able to. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing they can't vote on is municipal adoption of municipal plans or or approval of municipal plans, or approval of the regional plan. But anything else they can vote on, and again, they can, you know, it's, they can advise um, what their opinion is, they just can't. I, I don't know. I hmm. don't have enough information. I How think. are the county representatives chosen? County directors are chosen um, by nomination from board members, and the municipalities can submit names um, for county directors. Like Howard is a county director, Howard Merritt is a county director for Johnson. For many, many years, Johnson did not have any county directors. Do you have an opinion, Howard? Uh, hmm? No. No. <laughs> no. No. You're working on something else. I've worked up here, you know, I, I like being there, I, you know, I, I don't know. I've been in a while. <laughs> Whether Johnson should be able to have two county directors as opposed to one county director, for example. Ah, well, I don't really have thought about it, I don't know. <laughs> okay. All right, sorry to take it up more time, but. Mm -hmm. We have plenty of it. <laughs> Have you guys Plenty of time for the public. If anybody wants to talk, you should be able to talk. Have you guys said anything at all yet about uh, the Marvin Award? Uh, we did the Marvin Awards two weeks ago. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. Right, <clears throat> okay. Um, do you have a two-minute item? Not really. Uh, I think we can go ahead into the public comment and Okay, so this would be the 735. Um, Kate? Yes, so Kate Bonner with Trust for Public Land. Um, I'm here with Molly and Kim Pack from 
Green Mountain Club and Ian and I come from Vermont, uh, Forest Parks and Rec, State of Vermont. And we're here to discuss the potential acquisition of a parcel owned by Maple Horizons LLC. Um, it's called the Cotting Hollow Parcel, but it's not on Cotting Hollow Road. Uh, I have Matt, I'm not in here. So it's uh, 49.6 acres in Thank you. Um, Johnson and another 117 in Waterville. Um, the landowner would like to sell to the state and the state would like to buy um, the property as an addition to Longshell State Forest um, due to it including 0.3 miles of the Long Trail. Um, currently a completely unprotected section of the Long Trail. Um, only about six, a little over six miles of the Long Trail is, has no protection on it um, in the entire state of Vermont. So it's been a definite focus of both the state, the amount of and the trust of public land to try to secure those those last pieces for permanent protection. Um, if the property were sold and someone were to post it, um, it would it could cause a long trail hiker to have to do a multi um, mile road walk, which is not enjoyable um, and is not necessarily safe and um, also decrease kind of the, the wilderness experience of long trail hike. Um, and uh, the, the Long Trail is definitely a um, economic benefit to the state of Vermont and also to many of the towns that it goes through. A recent economic study um, done by Vermont Trails and Greenways uh, found that a little over $4 million of outside economic benefit um, was coming into Vermont annually from people who are coming just to hike the Long Trail. So that's only people who are coming to Vermont for the Long Trail. So there are a lot of other benefits to local Vermonters who would like to, to hike the Long Trail and get the year after. Um, so we are here to um, talk about any concerns you might have, um, discuss future management and tax implications, um, and ask for your support uh, for this land to become new state land. Um, so we have a, we met with the Conservation Commission last week, um, and they have fully supported and endorsed the project, um, both for its recreational value and also its value as part of a, the most important wildlife corridor in Vermont, along the Green Mountains. Um, while it's still a fairly narrow section of protected land, it still would help provide larger landscape connectivity um, of permanent forest land. Um, and the, we did a, the state put together kind of a tax implications analysis. As you know, the um, pilot payments, the payment on the taxes has changed over the last four years um, of how they determine what the state will pay. And um, as it is now, any new acquisitions by the state, um, the state will pay the exact municipal rate that a private landowner has been paying. Um, so it's really not going to have any impact on your taxes except for the local agreement of $2.58. So you'll lose $2.58 um, from what it would have been um, if it were owned by a brand new Thank you. Um, so Molly, do you want to um, talk a little bit about long-term Green Mountain Club's participation? Yeah, I'm Molly Flanagan. I'm the conservation manager at the Green Mountain Club. Um, the Green Mountain Club has been working since 1986 to protect the entire route of the Long Trail, mostly concentrated in northern Vermont given the land ownership situation in the state, and we've done over 90 conservation projects like this one, um, partnering with organizations like Trust for Public Land in the state of Vermont to um, to protect the route for the trail, the habitat that it, that it um, provides, and um, support this um, global recreation opportunity that brings people in from out of the state and promotes um, recreation within um, the state for Vermonters. Um, so we're really excited about this project. It's a property that we've hoped to be able to serve since the early 90s. Um, and if, if this project is able to move forward the way we'd like to envision it, it'll be acquired by the state of Vermont with a Green Mountain Club easement on it for um, to ensure the long-term protection of the trail on that property. But it'll, it'll allow it to be managed for um, timber and, and potential sugaring as, as the other state plans are open for management. Questions from the board? <clears throat> Forest and parks? Yeah, again, I was going up uh, 
part of the Forest Parks and Recreation. I'm our Land Acquisition Coordinator. Um, we're really excited to be working with our conservation partners, Trust for Public Land and Green Mountain Club on this. Uh, looking to, as Kate and Molly described, connect the Long Trail State Forest for wildlife connectivity, conserving forest land, um, and keeping it open for public recreation. Um, we think this is you know, a really important project and we're committed to continuing to work to conserve uh, the Long Trail throughout the state and this is just one piece of getting us closer to that goal. We are not asking for donation from the town of Johnson. <laughs> um, we will be funding um, three quarters of the fee acquisition price, um, hopefully with a uh, legislative um, line item in the capital bill uh, towards the Long Trail Fund, um, and um, that will cover some of the hard costs. And then uh, Green Mountain Club and Trust Public Land will be doing some private fundraising uh, to cover the remainder of um, the acquisition costs to help give GMC a, a conservation easement over the property, as well as um, other soft costs associated with the property. Is there um you're, have you been to Waterville on this? Uh, we are, um, no. We were going to be meeting them with them earlier tonight and their meeting got canceled, so I think we're scheduled for May 13th. Okay. Are, and the, um, does, does the um, <clears throat> Maple Horizons LLC, do they own other land in that area? They own um, some large pieces. They, they bought a, a, um, a conglomeration of timberland from Vermont. Um, Timber Associates about eight years ago, and this was kind of unimportant land to them. Um, they they own some much larger pieces that they're going to continue to manage for timberland, but this one had problems with accessibility and was kind of not part of the larger portfolio. So the land that they own is not. Does it abut these pieces? No. Oh, okay. No. Um, is there any tie between the? these two pieces as far as like if, if the Johnson ones would go through? I understand we, we just can recommend, but uh, uh, <clears throat> that, uh, that you're after our, our approval and comments, but not required uh, from us. Um, uh, so, but th they're not tied together. One doesn't have to go or the other or? Maple Horizon wants to sell them both at once. Okay. And so if one of the towns towns were not to support the acquisition by the state, um, it is likely that um, we try to get at least one of the parcels in the state hands and the other parcel might end up in Green Mountain Club's okay. hands permanently, but that's not ideal. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to take in a lot of information all at once here. Um, but one thing that just, um, flashed right out at me. Uh, is this letter from Niles Reinhardt to the select board uh, on the financial implications for the town? So, but it, it makes reference to a new pilot process. I have included a one-page summary of the new pilot process. What's meant by that? Yes, that is here. Um, it's kind of a little confusing, but you're welcome, Chad. I didn't know if it was all in your board packet or not. Okay. Yeah. But this uh, was implemented by the legislature uh, four years ago. And okay, so it's not, it's not new, new, it's four years. It, it, yeah, it's yeah. Relatively it's, new, but not. Right, and it has benefited Johnson. Um, mm -hmm. the, the new way that they calculated it um, has meant that you had a big jump um, in your pilot payments um, over the last couple of years. It was around 14,000 and uh, now it's up to, it went up to 17, 19, and 22 without additional land being um, owned by the state, but just because of the, the way that they made their calculations. This is the revenue source. This isn't the one that's based on the local option tax, sales tax. No. This is the other pilot one. Mm -hmm. This is um, based on the amount of land that the state owns within the town of Johnson. Right, um, but they're, so what's the what's the actual revenue source for that pilot funding, just generally? It's the general fund. It's the general fund. Thanks. So if this ends up in the in forest and parks land, yeah. Do you then have a other than? I assume it'll end up with the normal easement and. Uh, 
corridor, things like that? Yeah, for, he and he's been held by the Green Mountain Club, um, pretty similar to the other easements that GMC holds in the area. And it would be managed by the Department of Forest Parks and Recreation, uh, which would be determined through our long range management planning process, which is a public process. Um, takes place over a number of years and includes a, a bunch of uh, assessments of forest land, wildlife, uh, water quality, and water resources, things along those nature. Do you, uh, what, is that, I don't know how to categorize this, is that active management? Do you actually, you know, do you expect to be on the ground there looking at that or? <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, we actively manage our lands, um, and we, uh, all of our management is determined through the long range management planning process, but, um, you know, they would be open to potential timber harvest in the future or sugaring, um, timber stand improvement, uh, ecological improvement, invasive removals, things like that, um, but that would all come out through the long range management planning process. Okay. Do you think the state is really up with all of this? You know, you hear talk from time to time that the state doesn't do a very good job of managing the timber that they own. And a lot of timber just dies, and it could be harvested, you know, and turned into revenue and to actually thin the woods out to be a healthier forest. Do you think the state is lacking in that? Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, I think we do a lot of timber management on our lands, um, and we try to do it in a really sustainable fashion. Uh, long range, looking that we're going to be holding this land for a long time and trying to grow some healthy forest ecosystems. Um, so I think through processes like this where we can both conserve land for wildlife and for habitat and recreation, and also forest productivity. Um, you know, I think it's a win-win in, in a lot of areas. So isn't the main reason for this to protect the long term? It's not for timber harvesting, right? Yeah, we're it's not. It's a little corridor. We're certainly not focusing on it that was, um, it's been harvested recently and would not be harvested again for a considerable amount of time. Um, so this uh, project obviously focuses on recreation and the long term. Some of the most recent uh, forest management plans that um, are currently under <coughs> review by the public now and under, under comment have significantly increased uh, harvesting levels than they have in the past, for example, their camel management unit. Um, and there's some, some folks in the public that are concerned about that. But I think that um, you know, the, the state is, is trying to balance all the uses that um, a state forest provides and all the <coughs> conservation values. <coughs> forest management is one of them. Mm -hmm. Lois? <coughs> the Conservation Commission uh, met with the, with the forest, so we've had time to think about um, what the, the proposal is. And, but in our discussion at our meeting, one of the things that we felt very strongly about was um, because of its vicinity to the Bomo Town Forest. Um, which we own and manage, um, we have a real opportunity to uh, improve the wildlife corridor and, and improve, among other things, some of the diversity of the tree growth. You know, this, as you go up to Cotton Hollow Road, it, there's an awful lot of maple operation, and maybe we need more diversity around us and up on that parcel of the So, working with forest and parks just seems great for us. And you wouldn't have to put fiber optic network in the <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a plus. Right. It's probably stopping at my house. Uh, Denise. So we've already talked about a couple of things, but uh, for me, for us, and the Conservation Commission, it's a win-win. We would be strengthening, widening and strengthening the wildlife garden. That's just the greatest thing. We would be preserving the deep experience of Ivy. That's another great thing. But as a citizen, resident of Johnson, one of the things I'm excited about is, as a Johnson person, I can, I, I feel proud of every acre that we can protect. And this is a, a true uh, piece of openness that we will be protecting adjacent to the Montreal. It's just, uh, I'm still excited about possibility. 
Okay. Any other comments? Yes. Yeah, I'm Diana Osborne, and I came tonight um, just to support this endeavor. And um, the Green Mountain Club and the state have my unequivocal support. And I see no disadvantage to doing this project. And I see a lot of advantages. Okay. Duncan? I'm assuming that under current management plans, um, traditional recreational uses such as hunting um, are allowed on these lands. There's 100%. They're stuck in your head, yes. Yeah, uh, all land held by the Department of Forest Parks and Recreation is open to the hunting, trapping, and fishing. Is there a motion from the board or a comment? So. Oh, I'm sorry. Here. Uh, Eric News. I did do a part of the plan or the uh, Conservation Commission, but used to be the game warden in this area too. And uh, that is a really nice remote area down there. There's no uh, um, access uh, that can be readily uh, gotten up there by motorized vehicles. The, the I think the right way to it runs by uh, locks. Uh, Meat processing on the Waterville side, uh, and that's a, a, you know, just a two-track at best. Uh, so they used it for logging, I guess, in there, but that's pretty much it. So it's not closing anything off. Matter of fact, to make sure things stay open for folks that are willing to uh, walk in. And it is a pretty good hunting area. You can get some good buck out of that area. You know? <laughs> Any other? Any other comments? Yeah, I just. The log trail is a, is a incredible resource. I've been going up and down it for about 50 years now. <laughs> and uh, you, know, you said $4 million, that's just from out of state people. Out of state, where the main reason for coming to Vermont is using log trail. Well, so obviously it's a lot. Right. And there's a lot more Vermonters go through like in the log trail than there are from out of state. I've been doing entering some data for the Green Mountain Club. We have people from England and Scandinavia coming just to hike this trail. We really shouldn't try to wrap up the end of the state whole thing. And no doubt they have to stop for coffee soon. And everybody stops at Johnson. And I hear you can get a can of Hitty Topper now. So I'm about snacks. Every through like her. That's not an economic engine for Johnson, of course. You see all kinds of people fill, uh, filling their packs there at the market, too. Mm -hmm. Come on through, even if it's, if it's raining. Mm -hmm. Is there a, can we have a motion or comments or do we have from the board? Uh, so what, what kind of motion do we need here? Well, it said uh, seeking comments and concerns about a land acquisition. You know, are, are we in favor or are we? And ideally we'd love a letter of support. Um, we can use the minutes of your meeting if necessary, but letters of support are even better. Well, I asked a question that didn't indicate my real position on uh, forestry, which is that I, I would be happy to see uh, um, the forest grow more and be less treated as, as productive. Uh, I'd rather see more trees dying there, assuming they're not ashes. <clears throat> but, so. Uh, yeah, if the board wants a letter, wants me to write a letter of support, then that would be uh, a good motion. Okay. So we'll, is there a second? Second. Discussion? As long as we only lose $2.58. <laughs> 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 well, I said that we'll make that up. <laughs> Is there an identification to that person? <laughs> all right, all I, those in favor? I have a, a, a comment. It's not often we, well, more often lately, but not often that we get a crowd like this at a select board meeting. And I just want to thank the Conservation Commission and the, mm -hmm. the Osbournes and the um, thank you Forest Park Green Mountain Club, all of you, for, um, for such a well thought out proposal. Mm -hmm. So, all those in favor, please say aye. Bye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we have an exciting thing. <laughs> Comments on upcoming road and bridge standards. You're really going to make them sit through this? <laughs> <laughs> no, we have to take a five minute break before this happens. <laughs> Thank you. Just think of We lost our crowd. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> um, the diehards. Oh, uh, Kate, was the letter from Conservation Commission that you gave us that looked like it might have been an original? Oh, yeah. Yes, I should take the original. Thank you. Yep. I can send you a copy if you want one. That'd be terrific. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Just, yeah, it looked like an original, so I didn't want you to leave with that. Um, so, as we discussed, um, in your board packet, you've got two pieces. One with a, a cover page from the Loyal County Planning Commission, and the other one, the Town Road and Bridge Standards uh, for the Town of Johnson, Vermont. Uh, the, I'm sorry, what was the first one? It's got the uh, Loyal County Planning Commission got it. cover letter. Thank you. Um, so, the Child Road and Bridge Standards, uh, Johnson, Vermont, is our currently adopted road and bridge standards, which were revised. Uh, 2013 was the kind of session when these were revised, and uh, they were adopted more recently than that, but uh, that was the last time they were updated by the, the state. Ours were adopted, I think, in 2016. Um, the other packet is the upcoming revision. Uh, it's currently in draft form, and I think that we're going to want to send a few comments in on the draft. Um, the major changes to this are to try and bring it into compliance with the Municipal Road General Permit and Act 64. Uh, that requires us to perform um, pretty significant uh, maintenance on all hydrologically connected road segments. Hydrologically connected road segments are road segments that are within uh, so many feet of uh, a water source or repository. So whether it accepts or delivers water, uh, if if they're within a certain distance, then it becomes a hydrologically connected segment. Um, the road and bridge standards, as they're, the updated 2019 road and bridge standards, uh, that, that's their goal is to kind of bring everything into compliance with the MRGP, that, so that um, one of the complaints about Act 64 and the MRTP is that we now have two agencies overseeing roads and they're using different standards for the overseeing roads. That when A&R talks about our roads, they've got one set of concerns and one set of standards. And when VTrans talks about our roads, they've got a different set of standards. Uh, we really throw the draft first at process for Act 64 and the MRTP. We really worked on trying to bring that a little bit closer together. Uh, but the, process is not finished yet. This is another step along kind of consolidating things so we don't have different standards to meet for different organizations that we can have just one, more or less one policy for our roads uh, and a more consistent oversight uh, and requirements to meet. That said, there are quite a few things that we probably have a few issues with and take exception to a couple of the methods for this. Um, I want to run through what's in here as it's written. Uh, then I can talk a little bit about some ideas that uh, Rob at LCPC and I have had um, for possibly making up a new draft standard. Um, you know, they've asked for solutions to some of these things and Rob and I think we've got a pretty good model for solving some of these problems. Now this is due pretty soon, isn't it? Uh, comments are due uh, April 26th. Right. So isn't this a technical enough thing that we should listen to you decide if we think that we uh, like what you're saying and then tell you to go ahead and write a letter? Probably. Okay. So move. <laughs> <laughs> so move next. Yeah, consultation with Duncan or someone who. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, uh, so, Rob does a really good job in his cover letter of laying out a lot of the major changes uh, that have that are happening with this. Um, 
you know, bullet points start on the first page. I want to focus in on some of the ones on the second page. Um, you know, this really, these new standards, to a large degree, um, like I said, they want to bring us in line with the ANR standards. ANR has very prescriptive standards in ways that the VTrans has not practiced in the past. So with ANR, uh, we have to follow their model and their specifications, and we have a lot less input in it. So that's been changed here, where we're removing the right of the select board to modify standards due to unique circumstances or conditions at a specific project or activity. Uh, the next bullet point removes the right of towns to work with VTrans district to identify and implement alternative and more cost-effective district. So there, there's a lot of these areas where they're taking away our right uh, to negotiate and kind of determine local conditions. Um, that is dictated in Act 64 as it concerns to, as it relates to hydrologically connected road segments. So that is established state law that we don't get a lot of negotiating power for hydrologically connected segments. These road standards are supposed to apply to all roads. So this gets at our first uh, kind of breaking point with the road standards as written is that we really want to implement uh, these road standards for just hydrologically connected road segments, that these are uh, implementing best practices that are really only appropriate for road segments that, again, deal directly with water resources. Um, the way this is written, it's entirely silent on non, we have the option of adopting it for all roads or just hydrologically connected roads. It's entirely silent on non-connected road segments. So that's our first major revision is that we want to have kind of a, the idea that Rob and I have had is we kind of want to flip it and go back to something more like our existing standards and then modify the existing standards to say that this, this applies everywhere. Then for connected road segments, these additional requirements apply. Mm -hmm. Rather than starting at the road segments and saying that these really high bar requirements apply, and then are kind of silent on when it doesn't apply. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to start, uh, and Duncan has pointed this out, um, if we ever got into a disagreement with FEMA about it and we had adopted these standards, well, we might not follow these standards on a non-connected segment, but if we had a dispute about the condition of a road or the replacement value of a road where these standards didn't apply, if we only followed the state's model, nothing would apply. And we might have a really hard time getting a reimbursement from FEMA for uh, the replacement of our road and the, the condition of our road. So by kind of flipping that and stating a base level, uh, we'll have a stronger leg to stand on if we ever get into a funding dispute with FEMA. So that's our, and that's going to be a big revision to these standards because that basically requires an entire rewrite to what the uh, state has submitted as a draft. But it gets at a lot of our problems. So Brian, just to be clear, is that something that you're going to propose to VTrans that they change the draft to? Yes. Um, related to this, in the past and with the standards that we adopted, part of the reason we adopted them later than 2013 is that we used to be able to have a great deal of uh, ability to negotiate alternative standards. Uh, that it, the standards had to meet or exceed the state model. Um, they are greatly restricting that. Uh, to what degree remains to be seen, uh, because it's still in draft form, but I'm expecting that ability to uh, negotiate individual standards to be virtually eliminated. Uh, so that what isn't in the state model, uh, we, we might be more or less forced to adopt the state model uh, with little if any change for local conditions and local preference.
that's got the potential to cost the town a lot of money. It's more that it puts us at risk. Um, if we adopted these standards, we would not adopt the uh, hydrologic relevant requirements for non-connected road segments. We wouldn't be building, uh, you know, the kind of culverts and uh, turnouts and ditches and everything that we do on a, on a segment that has a lot of water on a segment that doesn't have a lot of water. Uh, so we really would only be applying these to hydrologically connected segments. But then if we had to adopt these as written, we wouldn't have anything that applies to our non-connected segments. So we would have the potential if there's an event that's, that damages those segments, we would you know, probably be able to negotiate with FEMA and probably be able to get our road brought back to its <clears throat> prior condition. But it would be opening ourselves up for a fight that we really could easily avoid by just changing the structure a little bit. But if you go further down on these bullet points, requires class four road standards to follow the same or equivalent practices as required for class two and three gravel roads when gully erosion is present. There's quite a lot of that around, so if we have to do that, that's going to be a tremendous expense. Uh, that has already, that's already in law now. That's well, then we're going to have to change a, a lot of our roads from class four to uh, trails or something, because we're not going to be able to afford that. Uh, that, that. That is a concern for us right now, is our class four roads on hydrologically connected road segments where gully erosion is present, um, within the next 20 years, we have to repair them. Uh, Isn't that the point? That's part of the point of our planning commission study right now. Right. It is we've got to determine which of these are, you know, kind of what's the the burden, what were the resources on them. Is it worth it for us to fix these up and repair them, or are we better off throwing it up? Do you have a map of the hydrologically hydro connected roads and what percentage of our road is qualified for that? Um, we have it on the ANR atlas. I can provide that. I didn't bring that today. I didn't want to get too much into the weeds about specific I'm just roads. What's the percentage approximately? We're pretty middle of the road as far as the state goes. Uh, but no, I, I, I hesitate to give a guess at it. I really don't remember. It'll be reasonably high if you think about it in the context of the type of terrain. Right, there's a lot of roads, roads are on. Stuff, right? There are a yeah. lot of steep hills. There's a lot of um, water, you know, yeah. connected waterways. Yeah. So as a percentage, it's generally going to be reasonably high. Yeah. That's true. And, but, the, the choice is not necessarily throwing up a road. Um, you can reclassify roads to legal trail status, right. whereby you're retaining the right of way, but giving up your, you know, the obligation to maintain them under the permit. You know, I've sat in front of this board for years, saying we can't give up our class four roads because they provide the public rights of way into natural resource lands and the right to use them. I am now, given what the legislature has done with the Minnesota General Roads requirements, going to be sitting here telling you, you may have to reclassify a lot of these class four roads to legal trail status to avoid the cost that's going to come down on you. It's going to be tremendous. It could be. Yep. So the reclassification to a trail presently would avoid the, the requirement of maintenance. Uh, yes. It seems possible to me that the state might say that reclassification is not achieving, if we allow this uh, reclassification to escape, it's not achieving the uh, objective that we want uh, as far as uh, the hydrologically connected, and so we're still we're going to impose a burden on you to some extent for to deal with the water off of trails. They could do that, and at the same time, you've got one branch of A and R out there 
Forest Parks and Recreation saying, we want you to do everything you can to retain those public rights of way so that people have access into the back lands. And on the other hand, you get the water quality people over here who can't see what these folks are doing, who say, you got to fix every water quality problem there is um, at the expense of access for these rights of way. I also see it as a, uh, this is a mandate if we have to do this to build infrastructure where our planning commission might not want us to extend these roads. As a, as a practical matter, in order to fix a rill or gully situation in the middle of a class four road that's just two tracks through the woods, you might have to build a road to get the vehicles there to do the repair, which is totally counterproductive to the idea of uh, you know, a rural class four road, which is not utilized. We've kept Brian here. Do you have thoughts on this? <laughs> yeah, I agree with, with Duncan. If, if, and that if you go and build that road to, to fix the gully erosion, <clears throat> then now you have a maintenance problem. You open because, it up. Because you open it up and everybody's going to be there and now you have to maintain it. So it's going to be another burden on the town just to maintain it. It was not well thought through. <laughs> we argued desperately with the a and folks, lost that battle. You're now stuck with the municipal general permit requirements unless the legislature goes back and changes them by um, legislative caveat. But they're probably not going to do that, at least for a few years. I, I've seen another job for your son. <laughs> I'll add it to the list. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I've seen no interest in the legislature of revisiting Act 64 at this time. Mm -hmm. um, they just want to figure out how they're going to pay for it. Yeah. Now somebody else is going to pay for it. Is that what you said? Yes. Well, yep. I, I want to... Do you have more, to, please? I do, and I want to focus our discussion here. The class 4 roads is something we're going to have to deal with, but that's not really what... That ship has kind of sailed already. That's not really what uh, we have available for comment. Um, well, it's in the bullets. It is. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but, it's, but it's, to Brian's point, it's, it, that horse is already out of the barn. I understand, yeah. but it's just, it boggles my mind that the state is everything they have to push off onto somebody else to take care of. <clears throat> right, but it's going to be a long night. So, we can, yeah, we'll, yeah. so looking at uh, third bullet point on this, removes the word process from descriptions of required materials for a road base while retaining the word crust in the description of the required surface material. So what they're doing is they're changing uh, their description of gravel from processed gravel to specifically crushed gravel. As you might recall, we do not own a gravel crusher. Uh, so the gravel we generate out of our gravel pit would no longer qualify. Uh, so if we were if we were to pursue this, if we wanted to, you know, when we get a new gravel pit, that would mean we'd also have to buy the gravel crusher, receive training, and go through all of that in order to have our own gravel. <clears throat> Secondly, the gravel, the crushed gravel that uh, we get, we like our screened gravel uh, for the road surface. We're, we're pretty happy with the product that we produce out of our gravel pit, and we'd like to be able to continue to use it. Uh, so we are asking for um, we're, we're asking for this to be changed and for it to go back to processed gravel uh, which could refer to screened or crushed just whatever you're using you know we think that we can make the case Jim Cota agrees with us that we can make the case that this is uh, Jim Cota our, our V trans district rep will be the kind of first point of contact for approving our standards um, that we make a good case that our gravel is good for our purposes and we want to be able to continue to use it. Um, there's also, uh, in the standards, if we really get into the minutiae of this, um, I think they, they cut and pasted a few times uh, from a, a couple other documents, and so this one gets a little worded a little bit funny and they seem to they don't have a clear enough distinction between the gravel used for the base of the road and the gravel used for the surface of the road. Uh, and they really should have a greater distinct distinction between the two. Um, so we're going to work on that bullet point a little bit in our, our comments. Um, 
let's see, the next one I wanted to get into establishes a new definition for intermittent streams and provides guidance for selecting the proper size culvert for intermittent streams. Um, we're concerned that they might be restricting access for the tools to determine the, that this is determined based on, and it's on a table on the back page under Appendix B. Uh, it's determined by the drainage area, uh, the number of acres in the drainage area. Um, we're concerned that they are restricting access to that information, that we really need their atlas and uh, GIS data in order to determine the drainage area uh, for a given location. Um, and if they restrict access to it, then we can't use this chart because we can't populate it with good data, so we're going to have to go and ask them for permission and sizes and everything, and if they're just going to make us do that, just make us go and talk to them in order to find out what size culvert we need to use, uh, that's how we should write the standard. They, they shouldn't give us a table that we can't use. Uh, the other one is we think that this table might not be factually accurate and that, um, you know, we think there's a couple errors in here. Uh, at a minimum, I'm pretty sure that under, under the MRGP, uh, the minimum diameter for a culvert on an instrument stream, I think the minimum size is 18 inches. Uh, no, and not 15 inches. So we have some factual problems with this, but mostly our, our problem with this deals with the idea that if they're going to restrict our access to the tools we need, uh, then we don't want to include this in here. We don't want to have it a false impression that we have some say and we have some self-determination over this when we don't. Why would they restrict your access? Yeah. What is the point of that? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Uh, what I've I'll been put that told, on Matt's list. <laughs> what I've been told uh, from LCPC is that we're not the only town having trouble getting that information anymore, but they don't believe that that's an intentional restriction. They think that there's it's, I wouldn't speculate why, but they don't think it's an intentional restriction, that, that there's just some other reason why we, that data set isn't loading on the a and R atlas. Um, yeah, because a and R keeps telling the planning commission that all this flow data and yeah. stuff that you're after is available to the public, but you're saying that, that there's a physical problem of getting the information it's not, a, it's not that they've censored. It's not their intention. Yeah, it's I, not that they've put a clamp on That's it. what's been indicated to me, is that it's not an intentional restriction, that it's a byproduct or accident that's causing it so that we can't access this data, and it's they're not actually problem. taking it away from us. Uh, but we want to be very clear that if they're taking it away from us, they need to be clear about that, that they don't want us to use that data to make this determination independently. Okay. Next. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, the class four road standards, this gets into another kind of, I, I'd characterize it as probably a, a, maybe a copy and paste error. Um, when you read through Appendix A uh, about the municipal road standards, there are several times in here where in Section 1, Appendix A, it refers to all roads. Um, uh, and these are supposed to be the standards that apply to Class 2 and Class 3 roads. But again, it frequently makes references to all roads. When you get to Section 2, which is supposed to cover Class 4 roads, it tells you to loop back and see Section 1. Uh, so if those do apply sometimes to Class 4 roads, does it apply every time it refers to all roads? It also includes class four roads? Uh, because if that's true, then that contradicts the statement that we only have to do this when gully erosion is present. Um, I think that's a typo and not an intentional change, but it, if it's left as written, it would be very problematic. Um, let's see, then, Uh, I have kind of a more philosophical problem with this, the way that they reference and use ERAF inside the document I don't think is appropriate. Um, 
And I think it creates a very circular reference and circular logic for uh, for the law. So we're, we're going to go after that one. Um, like I said, I'm, there's going to be a lot of structure changes to this. I'm getting past the bullet points now. Um, we've got the table on the next page. Uh, this is this could be a lot more clear on which things are optional and which things are not, which apply to hydrologically connected segments and which apply to non-connected segments. Um, the sections that are required are one, two, three, four, and seven, but uh, one and two, you can see one and two are required. They say, yes, they're required, but then three and seven, no, three is required. Four and seven uh, don't appear to be required in this table, but they say in the text that they are required. <coughs> So it's another kind of inconsistency. Uh, but again, this is going to get the, the draft I would like to make for this uh, changes this up in, entirely. Um, you can see I have a problem. Uh, sorry if I get a little bit too minutiae, but I have a problem with the last sentence on this page. So it's Section 2, Class 4 Road Standard, see Appendix A. If they're going to use multiple appendices, uh, they should use multiple appendices. They shouldn't use sometimes multiple appendices and sometimes separate sections inside one appendix. Uh, they use more than one appendix, but they sometimes refer to subsections in things that really should be a separate appendix. It makes the document very difficult to read and difficult to follow. Uh, so this is kind of an editing for Yeah. Me. I don't think they expected anybody to read it. <laughs> so it doesn't look like they especially. Uh, the guardrail section, we have problems with. Uh, it doesn't allow. It's very prescriptive. It allows, currently it allows one particular ending, uh, end treatment for guardrails. Uh, you know, which really is pretty restrictive and doesn't work very well for uh, alternative materials that we might want to implement sometimes. It has to be a W pattern guardrail and it has to have a number of, yeah, we, we want to address that one. Um, in Appendix A, under feasibility, there's a comment of excessive hydraulic hammering of ledge. Uh, that sounds like a judgment. Who makes the judgment? You know, they say that they're not going to allow us to work with VTRANS or, or uh, make our own determinations about deviations from the standard, but then they say that uh, we can deviate if there's excessive hydraulic hammering of ledge. So what's excessive? When can we make this determination? If they say we can't make this determination, then who is making it? Uh, and we need a, an established standard for that. Uh, next page, there is two contradictions. Um, when they're discussing shoulder berms, uh, the last sentence under the shoulder berms, it says the shoulder berm standard only applies to gravel roads with drainage ditches. Um, that's not to get, uh, we're, we're into the weeds, but not to belabor the point. It, that's, Exactly when you want to eliminate a shoulder berm is when you don't have a drainage ditch. Uh, that's an issue that we've run into a number of times that we, uh, we, we have been following that standard. That's what's been dictated to us by a &R. That's something we have to follow. It's not a popular standard. So whether they're intentionally weakening it, weakening it or not, we want them to be a lot more clear about that if they're saying that we no longer have to follow this. Uh, we've had a number of homeowners who were pretty unhappy when we cut down the shoulder berm at their property, but that's the practice as we understood it. If they're changing that practice, then it needs to be a lot more clear than just one random sentence at the end of a section. Uh, and I think that that's an unintentional error. I don't think that they actually mean to change that. We've run into that, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's something that we need 
yeah, I'd like to see that in there more clear. So homeowner comes to us say, why did you cut down that berm? Well, it's best management practices. It's what works and it's written right in there saying you have to. So it directs the water off the road instead of running down the road. Yes, right. the sheet flows off so you don't get the erosion. Yeah, it's best practice. So I, I think this is a, an error and not an intentional. Uh, and also in the next paragraph, uh, it says if distributed flow is not possible, roadway runoff may enter a drainage ditch. Uh, if you take that with the other one that says shoulder berms, the standard only applies if there is a drainage ditch. You know, it's kind of they're contradicting each other. That we should we should use sheet flow um, when we don't have a drainage ditch, not leave shoulder berms when there are drainage ditches. Okay. Are there any other high points you'd like to touch on? Or I, I'm tending to ask the uh, the board if they would, uh, as I indicated in the beginning, if they would uh, give you the authority to write conjunction maybe with Duncan and, and buy a, a letter expressing Town and Johnson's uh, yeah, position I, I, on this. I think most of the rest of these are relative, uh, relatively small kind of minutia, more like the ones we just got into. They're, they're uh, kind of likely to be typographic errors rather than big policy changes. Is there, since we have to, or it would be beneficial, I'm sort of suggesting a philosophy or a response. Any of your thoughts? Sounds like a deal to me. Yeah, I think we should give Ryan the authority. <laughs> Is there a motion to that effect? So yes. Make a motion. What's the motion exactly? I'm sorry. Whatever Doug said. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, Doug? What's the motion? I, I said that uh, Brian. That we should give Brian the authority to write a co the comments for the town of Johnson in conjunction with Brian and Duncan uh, on the uh, <coughs> proposed uh, highway and bridge standards as he's expressed his concerns tonight. Thank you. So moved. So, your motion? I think uh, I made it. Okay. I made the motion of what you said. And Kyle seconded. Okay, Kyle seconded. Any discussion? No. Can the public discuss? Yes. So I just want to point out that Brian and Brian and I have already met. Um, and I've certainly offered um, my thoughts and comments on it. I think I was asked to come here tonight to offer a couple of quick observations. Um, so I don't know if you want to take your vote and then I offer my observations or. No, we don't want to look that bad. What's that? We don't want to look that bad. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, so, high-level observations. Um, you do not have to adopt these standards. Um, they're in they're in the final rulemaking stage right now. We don't know what's going to come out of them. Uh, Brian is probably being optimistic if he thinks that there's much likelihood that there's very much going to change coming out of the draft standards based on everybody's input, his input, and. 250 other towns inputs and, and planning commission input. Um, whatever comes out, um, you should look at it carefully. You don't have to adopt them. What you should look at in that analysis is what is the cost of the town going to be if you don't adopt them. Mm -hmm. The cost, uh, the direct costs are going to be a lesser amount of, uh, of state share in the class two paving grants and the, and the structures grants. I don't know about the better backgrounds grants, whether they're going to penalize you on those or not. Not currently. Not currently. The other issue is FEMA um, and whether or not FEMA is going to penalize you. Um, if you don't adopt their standard, I nonetheless strongly encourage you to adopt some standard. Um, it may not be exactly what they come up with in their draft, but you really ought to have a standard and it really ought to address significant pieces of what they're proposing, understanding that you have no control over those 
hydrologically connected road section subject to your municipal roads general permit. That horse is left at the barn. You're going to have to you know, comply with the rules and regulations set forth in your municipal general permit for those sections. It's the non-connected sections that you really have to worry about. Brian is suggesting having a sort of a general standard and then additional standards to meet the requirements of the connected sections. That would certainly be one way to do it. Another way to do it would be recognize that you you're have to comply with the general standards through your municipal general permit anyway, and then adopt a standard um, that would apply to all roads. It would be less of a standard for the connected sections. Um, but that, would, that could potentially be another way to do it. Um, that would leave FEMA in the position of looking at your standards when they came into town, if you had a, a major issue, you would at least be able to point to it. We've got a standard. These are what we build to. That, in theory, should remove the argument. The Cotting Hollow situation, Doug, they originally were going to reimburse the town for the original cost to replace a four-foot culvert up there. It was around 100000 bucks. We fought for three years to get them to allow us to mitigate that project, and the project ended up being about $350,000. But we now have a structure in there that, heaven forbid, is never going to be wiped out by a flood. Um, but that's the kind of fight you're looking at. You're looking at, if, if you don't have a standard, FEMA will come in and say, you had a 48-inch pipe, we'll give you money for a 48-inch 40 inch pipe. Mm -hmm. They would not give you, if your standard said, we need a hydrological study, the study comes back and says, we need a you know, 4 by 12 culvert in there. Then, as long as you've got that standard out there, they shouldn't be able to argue with you. And you should be entitled to get that. But a point about that one in particular, that argument about the County Hollow happened even though state law required a study and the state's study required uh, the, cult, the box culvert that we ended up putting in. FEMA still fought us because we didn't have a local standard that referenced a, a culvert of that size and those requirements uh, because the state standards were, you probably remember the case better than I do, but um, for some reason, the, the state law that required us to do it, uh, FEMA didn't. They didn't, didn't consider care. it a standard. Yeah, it, 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 they didn't consider it a road standard, even though we couldn't get a, a permit to build it without following it. So there's good reason to have a standard, your own standard. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily have to be the 2019 draft proposed standard that VTrans comes up with. So as I understand it, for um, <clears throat> state purposes, we we'll get less reimbursement, but for FEMA, we need to have good, we should have good standards. You absolutely need to have those standards if you want to avoid the argument of, in FEMA is, you know, as I mentioned to Brian, and you guys have seen it in the news, with what we're seeing nationwide, FEMA is under a huge pressure to, you know, their budget isn't going to get any bigger, um, it, but they're getting more and more and more events um, that they have to, you know, deal with. Um, so if their budget doesn't increase in the amount of issues that they have does increase, What's going to happen? They're going to start looking for any possible way to deny claims yeah. or deny, you know, um, uh, applications. So if you don't have a clearly articulated standard, they're going to come in and deny you. They may try to deny you anyway, just that's, because of the additional pressure. That standard is for another day. The standard is. I mean, you have a standard that you adopted but was not approved by VTrans, that's an issue. 
if I were you, I'd be asking VTrans to right. sign off on. They they had indicated that they would approve the standard that you guys approved back in 2016, or but VTrans never approved that standard. That's an issue for you guys right now, even for municipal paving grants and structures grants. It changes the percentage that they will pay the local share, the local match versus the state match by 10%. That's real money on a, you know, a $100,000 project. That's real money. That's what you need to look at, though. If, if adopting their standards is actually going to cost you more money than what you lose on your local match share, it may be worth not adopting the standard, but you have to do that analysis. And I can't, I can't sit here and tell you whether it, it's beneficial to do it or not do it. But as far as writing a letter for something that you think won't change anything, this wouldn't enter into that letter, would it? Not necessarily. I, I, you absolutely should have Brian write the letter. The letter right now, I don't know if you're going to send it to VTrans and LCPC. That's my plan, okay. to send it to both VTrans and LCPC. Yes. I, mean, I would recommend that you do that. Uh, LCPC is going to comment as a board um, back to VTrans. So if Brian writes a letter to LCPC, we'll incorporate his comments into that overall response. But your response should also go directly to VTrans. Okay. Other points? That's pretty much it. I, I'm not real optimistic. The real issue is Brian hit the nail on the head early on. You got water quality standards being imposed by ANR through the municipal general permit process, and you've got what were traditionally select board and VTrans type standards relative to roads. Um, and they're trying to marry those two standards into one document. Mm -hmm. There's not a natural synergy there because the ANR standards for the hydrologically connected roads, which you are already subject to under your municipal general permit, are more rigid and there's a lot less room for negotiation on those connected segments than there is on the non-connected segments. So they're trying to shoehorn, you know, 10 pounds of potatoes into a five pound box um, with these two different standards. And that doesn't work very well. Brian, now that we've kept you up. <laughs> <laughs> Any thoughts? Any other? No, I just, I, there is things that need to be changed or we need to adopt, you know, different standards. <clears throat> so when, when do we get these standards back from, do, when we receive comment back from we don't know. We don't know. We don't stay know when, they're, when they're going to finalize their draft. Is it 2019 or? Uh, they're calling them the 2019 standards. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What I've, been, what I've been told, and I don't know if this is actually true or not, but I'm helping Walcott right now. Um, and that you have to sign a, a certificate of compliance with your codes and standards. They're telling us. Uh, yeah, so, so Walcott's adopted a set of standards from 2013. Walcott. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can call it, put that on the top there. Um, so they've adopted this standard, and they've signed off on the, on the certificate of compliance. What I'm hearing rumors of is that VTrans is going to go back to them. This is for the purpose of getting structures, grants, and paving grants. So it's specifically to get grants. There, I, what I'm being told is VTrans is going to go back to them after these standards have been out in an, with an opportunity for towns to adopt them and have them recertify compliance with the 2019 standard. Now that's pretty much my French bullshit. Um, and, you know, really, really uh, thin ice for VTrans to be on. Maybe they'll rethink that and apply it next year. I certainly hope they do. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion that they remember, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks. Standard system. Thanks, Ricky. Get out of the house.
thing. Right. They're working yeah. on the state. Yeah. Yeah. We're all set. Yeah. Uh, we'll uh, get them all done. Plan Lamo County Planning Commission. Two. All right. Put that part together. <coughs> We're making progress because we can skip number Thank two. You. No, they. Yep. It, they're the draft. Three. Historical from Society from vacancy. Is there a from feature on to that? Well, we would be delighted to have you vote and um, send us for our next meeting, Mary Jean Smith. She's been a part of the Historical Society for Golden began. She helped us as we were planning it, and she's done lots of things along the way. So, moved in Johnson all her life. Okay. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Congratulations, Mary Jean. I'll let her know. Okay. All right. Number four, Tuesday Night Live Communications Committee. All right. I made it. <clears throat> in your packet, you've got a, a short letter that I've drafted for the board. Um, kind of lays out some of the steps uh, as I would recommend we take them for um, formally accepting the resignation of Bill, Meg, and Michael, and forming the new, forming a new uh, Tuesday Night Live Committee. Um, and we've got a number of volunteers. Why don't you read down the bullet points so the people in the audience are much oh, yeah. So, uh, first would be to accept the resignations. Uh, the second would be to uh, more formally establish the, the, the committee, uh, of a, a Tuesday Night Live committee, and determine kind of the size of the committee, um, a little bit about it, it's, you know, that, that it formally exists as we understand it. Um, then I would recommend that we suspend the regular appointment policy uh, due to the Tuesday Night Live Committee requiring members with certain skills and we're facing a relatively tight time constraint in order to get the committee up and running in order to get the program off the ground for this year. Um, then we'll, we will appoint new members from uh, available volunteers and uh, we might not set all of the uh, officers of the committee, but I would recommend that we set at least a board chair. Um, Doesn't that usually come out of the committee? Usually. Mm -hmm. so that's why I'm saying, I'm pointing that out because it's a little bit unusual for the, uh, uh, the select board to appoint that board's chair uh, without the board having any input on, right, on what that process is. but. Uh, it would further the town's general interest of ensuring that the Tuesday Night Live Committee is up and running in short order uh, with, again, making a particular appointment rather than following the policy would also let us make sure that the skills we need are, are serving on the committee. Yes. Uh. Thoughts from the board? So um, what's, sorry. Go ahead. So is the first thing that we need to do as a board is decide the um, size of the committee? Well, we should really do this. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just by, by the bullet points okay. one at a time. Accept the rights of nations, uh, formally create the new committee, uh, and determine its size. You know, we kind of have a committee, but let's formally recognize the Tuesday Night Live committee. Um, then we would suspend the appointment policy, <clears throat> appoint new members, and appoint a chair from among those members. So I might add a, suggest we add a bullet point um, to give this new committee, the new committee members, um, some guidance on what we feel are priorities, things that really need to happen quickly. Thank you. That'll be a, a good suggestion. But generally the process is fine. I mean, I don't know, do we need to determine five or seven committee members until we, do we need to determine the number up front or can we do that after we look at the slate of people we have and how we want to organize it? 
Um, I suppose that the order on that isn't especially important. Um, I'm just thinking, kind of model it. The other committee we created recently, the Fiber Committee. Yeah. You know, we created the, we set the number of seats and then appointed people to fill those seats. So I'm modeling this off of following essentially the same process. I might suggest in, in, as far as accepting the resignations that we consider terminating the uh, communications committee, which would include accepting the resignations of uh, Meg, uh, Bill, and Michael. And so we, the communications committee would be gone. We then move on to the Tuesday night live committee. That seems pretty clean. Pardon? That seems pretty clean. Lois, well, since you were on the communications committee, does that make sense to you? Well, if you're looking for the Tuesday Night Live committee just to do Tuesday Night Live, then it would. If you're right. thinking <laughs> in terms of uh, having a communication committee of, of which Tuesday Night Live is one one function, then you probably don't want to do it at all. But Are there other functions we're overlooking here that Well, feel? the communications committee, when, when it existed, um, addressed various issues that came up related to communications and also um, supported the uh, Winter Carnival. Mm -hmm. and it was communication and events. Things like the kiosk by the Sterling Market, those, some of those kinds of things too. My thought on that is it's become so synonymous with Tuesday Night Live that, that you know, if, if we have a communications committee, we could do that separately and, and reconstitute or recreate it. You know? That's what it sounds like, yeah. yeah. It hasn't, the, the communications committee really hasn't existed well, for a long, long for a long, long time. So, yeah, sure, let's, let's move along with it then. All right, mm -hmm. so I'll move that we uh, eliminate the communications committee and accept the resignations of Bill, Meg, and Mike. Is there a second? Second. <coughs> Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Um, uh, the, it wasn't clear to me what, what what's the uh, desires of the board with regard to um, creating a committee and naming them or the number. How would you like to approach this and what, what sort of order? Well, I would suggest we punt the second bullet item down the list. And, okay. But that's just me. Other thoughts? With all of these nine people that are volunteers, you hate to turn any of them away. Right, which is why I kind of wanted to have that discussion first. Right. And then decide, well, maybe some of them would are very happy to be volunteers. Well, they'll still volunteer. Right. I just don't want anybody to feel you know, slighted. Mm -hmm. I think it's great that nine people have come forward. Well, maybe we should, maybe we should just approach the question of Let's have a Tuesday. Let's make a motion to have a Tuesday night live committee and talk about uh, what its uh, uh, the purpose would be. You know, as far as uh, arranging, you know, bands, scheduling, uh, equipment, uh, different different things like that. People have bullet points. Just just a thought. About them. Yeah. So basically, you know, naming a committee and giving it its charge. Sounds good. Do it. If I wasn't the chair, I'd be standing up. If I was the acting chair, but I am. You'd be standing up. And make, you know, to make all the, the time. motion that you know? just made. <laughs> to pick a proxy. Pick a proxy. <laughs> Somebody to do your work for you. Michael. <laughs> well, yeah, so we, well, yeah, we need a Tuesday Night Live committee, and it's so describing the work of the committee? Is yeah. That well, we could say that we're going to have a committee and then approve that and then do the discussion of what's going to happen, correct? Either way, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, fine. I make a motion that we have a uh, Tuesday night live committee. There you go. Is there a second? That wasn't so hard, was it? Second. <laughs> discussion. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. All right, next question. What would be the, uh, perhaps that would be the, what would its uh, charter or, or its uh, charge be? What would it address? So obviously arranging the uh, summer concert series, Tuesday nights in July and August. They don't even need to be that specific as to which Tuesday night it's going to be if they want it to be June and July. And it's up to them, but right. summer concert series. That's fine, we'll let it go with that. But Tuesday nights kind of makes sense. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Picky, picky, picky. We're going to ask input from the audience, so I uh, go along. Yeah. I think. Jump in. Yeah. Anybody's got anything to say? Yeah. Say it. Yeah. Thanks. So their first charge would be um, overseeing the return of equipment from um, the old committee members, previous committee members. Um, is the town involved with that as well, or just the committee? I'm sorry? Is the town, the town, somebody representing from the town be involved in that as well as the committee? Yeah, I, I would I, think I, that Brian should, should be involved with that in the committee. Yeah, I, I think that with the town kind of taking ownership of, of the equipment, it would be appropriate for the town to kind of yeah, somebody there to, to receive it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah. I mean, if, uh, a member of the committee, but certainly it, it can't yeah. just be on volunteers. Um, no. And I, um, in that process, would really request a very formal um, passover of equipment with a, a very uh, rigid account, uh, thorough inventory. account of what the what inventory is returned, what inventory isn't returned. Um, I think that's signed off by, on by whoever uh, returns it. I think that's going to be a really important. Is thing. there an inventory list? We have a list of all equipment that the town has reimbursed for. Okay, great. That's all you need. Uh, and I would think the committee could work with Cal Stanton, um, right. who has a pretty good understanding of what he passed off to, yeah. to them. So I, I, I'm really interested in a very formal process there. Mm -hmm. um, Sponsors. We need to find out who they have for sponsors, who they've contacted. Right. Yeah. We need to find out who the vendors are. Have they sent you that information? Meg has sent Stop. us a spreadsheet with looks like most of the names of sponsors we and kind of know who they were. vendors and who's sent in money yeah. and who well, hasn't. We've been there every week. Yeah. For, well, yeah. we've been there. So there's a bit of a template to work yeah. from. Need to know if what bands have been booked and if they have contracts. Yeah. As far as I know, no bands have been booked yet. So okay. the status of bands and status of vendors, basically. Need a budget. And I need yes. I need. We need to know the budget. I'd also be interested in having. Um, I don't know if we're going to get the Gmail account from Bill and Meg, if they would be willing to relinquish it to us, would certainly be grateful. But if not, I'd like to suggest that, well, even if we do, that we set up a TNL or Tuesday Night Live at townofjohnson.com yeah. so that that information, we retain that information. It's not out there for somebody else to, yeah. um, and if we get the Facebook page back too, I don't know if that's possible. But. Um, what about the, uh, who does the poster and all that kind of stuff? Um, yes. I think that's got to be. Cal knows all Cal that information. Cal probably has a lot of that. Yeah. Um, Carrie Cook used to Carrie. Do yeah. yeah. She, I mean, she's done it for years. Yeah. Mm hmm mm hmm And probably has the So a sound engineer, I'll have to figure and that out. Talk to one guy, he's, Brian's going to give him a call. Um, he's interested. He's in a band. Um, Where is he from? Morseville. Does he do Morseville's Wednesday Night Live? I, I, he just sent me a, because I put it out on Facebook that we were looking for one. Uh, he contacted me and said for me to give him a call, but I thought I'd have Brian give him a call because yeah. He knows what we need. Yeah. 
we met with uh, uh, Tim Bikovitz. I uh, hope I'm saying that right, but uh, from the uh, from the university, and he was interested in helping up to some degree, but having a deeper bench than uh, one person should, would. Yes, definitely. Yeah, more than one. If you can. Yeah. You never know what'll come. Oh, even if the two work together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, what one thinks of the other one, what one doesn't think of the other one will help out. And it's going to be their first year. Yeah. It's going to be a, there's going to be a learning curve so. with our equipment. And, you know, I don't believe that either of these people are, are local. So if they don't have to come to every right. concert, they might appreciate right. sometimes not having to drive in. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're going to have to figure out the envelope's management, certainly. That, that eats up a Tuesday every, you know, every Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would assume this committee would be, in, in, in pulling this off, would be consulting to the extent they can procure Cal's involvement. Sure. And in, that, uh, that he certainly has, a, has the experience and would pro provide a bridge, you know, if you buy a business, a lot of times you want to be mentored along for a while, and right. he certainly, it sounds like some, some of the people who were there might be willing to help, uh, but Cal certainly preceding the, the people who were on the, uh, Bill, Meg, and Michael preceding them, he has, he's rich in, in experience, and he also has, uh, um, he's well known to everyone who would be a vendor or a band. Yeah, no question. Yeah. So, anything else we ought to think of or try and incorporate into uh, a Well, my list charge? right now is, is the equipment existing in new sponsors, vendors, accounting, uh, bands, budget, media matters, and the, and as I say, in locus management. I don't know how we're going to phrase that, but... Locus? Uh, huh? Did you say locus? In locus management, you know, pig Latin. The night, uh, off, the, night the, the, the day, the you know, the on the field people. Thank you. Okay. Day of the event. Gotcha. And then liaison with JSC. And I would like to uh, envy you. Huh? <laughs> envy you. <laughs> and me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you are going to remind me you. Oh yeah, them. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I would also suggest that this committee, during the, you know, at, at, at appropriate periods, like getting off the ground, uh, maybe once during it, or, or afterwards, have a representative here saying what's going on. So, oh, yeah. so we are no, not no. in the same, in the same, who are you yeah, well, situation. Yeah, we'll, we'll make regular monthly reports. So. The other thing to return is uh, tents. Not just the equipment, but right. they talked about yes, buying the tents, tents. canopies. T-shirts. Oh, that's an, I include that in equipment. In, yeah. 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 They put me in first. Right. Yeah. I thought you said hemp. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Michael, Michael, Michael. <laughs> we had a, a similar discussion two weeks ago. <laughs> it was with you. <laughs> All right. So, is somebody willing to propose a motion for a charge to this committee? Or do we just, uh, is there a so moved from Howard's statement? It's so moved from Howard's statement. And, and my addition. And your addition. And yes. email address and Facebook page. Uh, yeah, that's why I what Media Matters was. Media Matters, was, okay. Was all that okay. Under that okay. rubric. Do you think that's yep. sufficient for our record that they can pick that off? I think so. Okay. Uh, Discussion. Yeah, I mean, obviously, these are the priorities we lay out, but there's... It's going to change. There's going to change. There's a whole lot out there, but... Yeah. Who is the second? There hasn't been one yet. Here's a, oh, so. You need a second? You got a second. Okay. Well, Any more discussion? Will you be able to use Tuesday Night Live? Pardon? Is Tuesday Night Live available at, to use, or... We're just going to go ahead. talked about the trade name being registered. Uh, they have indicated that they are, I suppose that is another item that I would recommend as a friendly amendment. Um, they have indicated that they are willing to 
do whatever we want with the Tuesday Night, Tuesday Night Live Corporation. That was mentioned last meeting, actually. Yep, that they reiterated it. So they would like us to do. I, I, I'm getting the feeling that they would like us to tell them what our intention is sooner rather than later. So uh, that would be something else for the committee. Is if the committee sees a use in keeping it, we keep it. But uh, well, I think they would like to be able to step away from it, whether it's step away from it by its dissolution or step away from it because new people are appointed to it. Uh, oh, we're going to need... The, I was know. asking about the training, though, Yeah. which is different than the corporation. We're going to need advice of council on this. Yeah, my suggestion would be that we, this is your charge and that the select board be left with uh, the Tuesday Night Live and, and you just go ahead and charge ahead and... Well, that would be... Yeah, I don't think they should it. get bogged down with that. Right, right. We should figure that piece out. Well, I, I wouldn't mind taking a position as a select board and, and asking them to dissolve the, the corporation. Um, or at the very least, transfer it over to Tom Johnson. Okay. But that would that would I, be not germane to this one. Unless you're asking them to do that. That would be the select board. That would be the select board. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You were yeah. talking about de delegating it to the committee. I'm saying that I want to make a recommendation on it. That the select board does. So yeah, huh? we do that. Right, but we have to take care of the first that's one. That's the one thing first. Yeah, no, that's, thing first. that was my suggestion of, you know, if we wanted the committee to do it or if we wanted the, the select board to do it. So you guys I want think it. We If we want the select board to do you it. You really then. want to do it. We do. We don't yeah. want The thing is, we don't want to bog them down. Yeah, no. no. I, 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 yeah. I should do the select board job. Absolutely, that should be the select board chair. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Nay, there are none. The ayes have it. So, um, you want to do a size of the committee, or should we just let that flow until we see what, well, what falls out of the woodwork? Uh, what do you want to deal with next? Well, we've got a, we've got nine volunteers here. Um, I, first of all, I have to say number six on the list is Mara Siegel, who I'm married to. So I feel like that could be a conflict. I want to disclose it straight up front. That you two know each other? I don't yes. know about her. Um, <laughs> no, but I, if we're if we've got to pick five and nine people step forward, I'll probably recuse myself if she's on the slate. So. Um, but I would like to see uh, certainly a mix of people that we know well and have a track record of getting things done, people like Howard and Ann and Jen, um, and new people that we have not been so, in, so involved in town um, uh, committees before and are young and are expressing an interest now like uh, Sophia and Jasmine and, and Joey. So I, I'd really bring in some new blood. like to see kind of a mix of blood. I, I found we have 18 on our board at Field Days. And, wow. And uh, we don't have enough. Mm. That's the way I feel. Well, that's a huge Well, operation. yeah, and the other thing is here it's, you bring in more volunteers, too. Exactly. There might when, be the committee, but When you bring a someone in, like with us anyway, you bring somebody in, you bring the whole family in as volunteers. So the more, the merrier. Because you're going to have some that aren't going to pull their weight. you got to figure that out. So you'd be good with a nine-person committee? Mm -hmm. nine I would say so, too. Jen? I agree with Anne. I yeah. think yeah. The more the nine merit. people volunteered, and that's a reasonable number. I, I think, well, not to point out that Eric's not here tonight, but you know, you have those days where people can't make it. You know? Yeah. yeah we need and a, I think that's a typical thing. Yeah, nine would be a quorum of five, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's doable. Yeah. I move we appoint the nine uh, people that have volunteered to be on the call. Mm -hmm. uh, the one thing we should, the one part of our order does matter. Uh, before you appoint members, you should suspend the appointment policy. Oh, yeah. Is there a motion to suspend our appointment policy? <laughs> oh, you have Mike's motion on the floor. He's got to withdraw. Oh. I have my lack of a second. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can I ask you a question about the committee? The, the letter that went out asked for people who were interested in being on the committee or to help implement. So perhaps everybody on the list is not interested in being a committee member. Are you interested in being a committee? Touch with them all. Find out. Okay. 
Uh, and while we have a uh, good number of them here, are you interested in being on the committee? Yes. You're interested in being on the committee. Uh, Lois, are you interested in being on the committee? Well, I wasn't thinking of being on the committee. I was thinking of, being, of having a piece that might be... Volunteering. Yeah. Volunteering. But you're on committee volunteering, isn't it? <laughs> well, I, I, that's on me. I think I misunderstood Lois's okay. intention. And Mara? Uh, sign up. Sure. And Jen? Yeah. Okay. And were you interested? Okay. No committee. I'll be there to do whatever, but I just and can't commit this summer. So that gives us eight. And Sophie said she was interested, but just couldn't be here tonight. So. Right. Yeah. She's on the list, yeah. Joey, too. Okay. I don't know Tim Mikowitz. Does anyone? That's the NVU sound guy. Head of Dibden right now. Who's and knows a lot about equipment and might have some. Tim, that's a plus. Yes, we want him. He was interested in being on the committee? Yeah. yeah well, as a yeah. committee member? Is he member? a Johnson resident? No, well, that's he has an apartment. He has an apartment here, no, but he lives in Thetford, but he's he got an apartment in. here because he's the director at Dibden now. Mm. But so he'll oh. be here all summer because of Brooklyn. Yeah, he's yep. going to be here all summer, exactly. I don't think we can let you off as a volunteer. <laughs> Sure we can. We don't want eight. Huh? We don't want eight. Well, we don't well want we'll eight. get. We'll find a couple more. Let's just keep going here. Do you have Tim? We have Tim. Oh, yes. We'll give that nine. You'll you'll find somebody else. Yeah. We have an opening. Um, All right. Be a member of the select board. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> we need somebody in a committee assignment from you guys. Eric. Eric. I thought Eric. Doug volunteered. Eric. For real, I did. It was Doug and uh, it was Eric and I mean Kyle and. Uh, That's true. We were we were a liaison with the committee. Well, Doug's going to be gone for. It's because of you two guys. They quit. <laughs> <laughs> well, That's not done. what I heard. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. You did your job. Well. <laughs> and we were recording too. All right. So I think what we can do is uh, we can uh, let's. Let's uh, address the question of the number of members. Well, first of all, I'd like to make a motion that we suspend the regular appointment policy uh, due to uh, the TNL committee requiring members with certain, well, strike that, uh, that we suspend a regular appointment policy to make these appointments. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. So. I'd like to make a motion that we appoint, that we, uh, Make a nine member committee and appoint eight tonight. Perfect. Um, Perfect. Howard Romero and Mullings, uh, Mullen, Mullings, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, Tim Mikovitz, Joy Lahuli, or Sophia uh, Beard, Burrard, right. Mara Siegel, Jasmine Yiris, and Jen Burton. Is there a second? And, second. and one open seat. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any negatives? Hearing none, the ayes have it. Congratulations. Now we were going to. Thank you all for stepping up. Really. Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. much. Question of appointing a chair to this committee. Is that something we should defer to them? I think it was thought that we would appoint a chair just to make somebody charged with organization and getting yeah. it moving. They put it over now. Is that a motion? Yes, I agree. I'll take it out. Is there a second? Howard is absolutely the most logical. I'm going to make a second just so we can get there. Howard's absolutely the most logical person to get it. We've just, but I also want to say we just created a committee of eight, seven, six women, and we're Making the uh, the old yeah, white guy the, uh, <laughs> the chair. Oh, boy, I, I yeah, seriously, does not anybody well, would have any objection <laughs> to Howard being the chair? I think I you should put Casey on that committee too. Oh, mm -hmm. boy, don't do that. Do you have any interest in leading the committee? What's that? Yeah, it doesn't make any difference to me. I I just want to help. It doesn't make any difference. You doesn't do it, Jim. I don't want to lead the committee. <laughs> <laughs> what is if it helps to call him a chairperson? Would that do? I'm not. I'm not concerned. Okay. He's just. He's he just, just playing devil's advocate. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. He's not the only one who noticed. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm just Mara, saying. Mara, how do you feel? Um, I, uh, I certainly have, I'm aware of the issue and it a little bit, but I don't know that I want to volunteer. It's the problem which happens right. anyway. Right, 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 right. Um, I would suggest to the committee that you get some more men in the committee and then we'll, we'll have a little more quality. A younger <laughs> white man to leave? A younger way. <laughs> I was thinking of a black midget, but <laughs> all right, that's out of work. Well, because time is so important, it's nice to call the question. I just want to say because time is important, it's nice to have folks, somebody who has less work than a lot of the people on that committee have a lot of yeah. are still working, and yeah. Howard has a relatively flexible schedule I compared do. to some. I do. Yeah, that so makes that will forgive him for the rest of his. Howard's. Uh, okay. Uh, the logical person to chair this committee. I'm just. There's no question about that. I think to the extent that Howard has some curmudgeonly characteristics, it'd be very useful here. <laughs> Was that a compliment? <laughs> yes. Okay. Backhanded way. Um, so. No, seriously, I, I'm calling the question. Who you are? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to take a vote on this. Okay. I have to take a vote on calling the question. Then I withdraw. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> All those in favor of what was there a second? You know, forgotten in this banter. Uh, yeah, weren't we discussing? Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Mike okay. moved in that second. All right. All those in favor of Howard being chair, please say aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? The ayes have it. I would just like to say, Howard, can we get a meeting as soon as possible? I was yeah. Thinking tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, this week. But but we gotta contact the other people, huh? Yeah. Not too much. How do we? A bunch of other people. Can you get the emails of the people who are here? Yeah. Yeah. And Howard, if you message to me, I've got email addresses for uh, everybody. Everybody. Okay. Then that's the way I'll do it. Okay. Thank you very much, Howard. Thank you. Thank you, Howard. Yeah, I will. I will not say it's my pleasure, but it's till the end of the it'll season. Be, it'll be okay. It'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. We'll get it done. Fine. All right. Um, oh, uh, will we post for the? I take it back, Colin. Yeah, I go ahead and post for the last. <laughs> oh, you don't. Thank you. No, you don't. Today. Okay. Um, Today. <laughs> something that was brought up at least one, maybe two of the meetings was uh, one or two people requested that there be some kind of communication from the town on how. How things are going, moving, how things have moved forward. Sophia requested that. Yes. Almost, okay. almost yeah. twice. Twice. Think, About yeah. what? Tuesday you know? night? Yeah. It's true because the town is like. So. Concerned. Uh, I, I don't know who list. that should come from, if it should come from Brian or the committee, it but. It should yeah. come from Brian. Yeah, I, I think it would look different. Come from us. Hey, okay. So we're on the website, cigarette on the town website. Well, yeah. I think uh, from the front, front porch. Oh, yeah, yeah. true. Yeah. People see it more there. Well, we want to yeah. post for the last vacancy, so yeah. we'll kind of yeah. weave that together maybe or, mm -hmm. or make two postings, whatever. And However, it shakes up. Thank you to Bill and Mike for their service. So yes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's, not be, let's not treat them like pariahs. No, just uh, people know it's it. It was a good program. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, the request number five comments on that. Are you done with us? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> Get to work. Good night. Thanks, guys. Yes. Yeah. All right. So next item in your packets. Is a request from uh, VASA by way of VTrans on uh, VASA requesting uh, for their path uh, to head from Rocky Road. They want to get from Rocky Road to Hoag Road. So that means a uh, short travel distance along Route 100 C. Uh, while they make the transition from one to the other. Uh, it's a one-page sheet on one side. It's got our ATV ordinance. On the other side, it's got a small hand-drawn map. Um, 
VTrans has received their petition uh, for the right to run in the state's right of way on Route 100C and has asked the town if we have any comments about uh, the proposed crossing or, or path. None by me. So is the state right of way includes the whole road? Are they intended to travel on the travel portion of the road? Uh, they would be over as far as they can be. I think the shoulder up there is a little bit small for running entirely off the road. Uh, yeah. But I don't, I haven't gone out to measure it or, or anything. It's just kind of my for, feeling is that it's. Is this for ATVs? Yes. Snowmobiles? Snowmobiles? No, no. ATVs. Oh, sorry. I saw snow. Oh, oh. except snowmobiles. Oh. Right? Except. <laughs> uh, so it's ATVs uh, connecting well, two of their paths. That's a t state highway. Why is the town involved in that? Uh, the state has asked us for comment. Oh. We don't need to give the comment. We don't approve it or deny it. They'll do whatever they're going to do. Uh, but we can issue any comments we have about if we have strong feelings about whether it's a good idea or a bad idea or so what they want so they because they use rocky road on their atvs they use they rocky road and hoag road. road and where do they go from hoag road uh they've got trails up. they do up into yep. there oh why road could come if don't you go hoag road you there's a, a fourth class road that comes out on clay hill hmm. Um, right about oh. east of Jerry Whittemore, uh, yeah, east of Jerry Whittemore, just before Cemetery Road. Oh. Hmm. If this is proper, I'd make a motion the town has no objection. Okay, is there a second? Does that mean the town has no objection? What are, are they asking for a letter of support? or? Um, they're asking for comment. For comment, we could Just go so far as a letter of support, or we could say, you know, we have no opinion, or that kind of anything in between. And, and your motion is we have no comment. We have no objection to them doing it. No objection. I. Well, is there a, is there a second? I'll, I'll do a second so we can discuss. It. Okay, discussion. These are machines. Uh, they're, they're, they've got legal use of... They're registered machines. They've got legal use of, of Rocky Road and legal use of Hoa Road, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So the only comment I would have is that a, that goes into a blind, kind of a blind corner as you're headed up the, up the hill, huh? It is a tricky right. spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's no blinder than traffic pulling out on 100 C, really. No, yeah, but they're not in a vehicle. Uh, they're in a much smaller and slower. I understand, then, but anybody that drives an ATV takes those chances. And it's 50. That's a 50 mile an hour okay. section, yeah, right? 50. It is 50 mile an hour. Yes, but we want uh, them to get to the other side of the road. Well, we want them to do it safely. Legally. Legally. Mm -hmm. And if they get hit, it's their responsibility, not the town's. We I don't could. Know, Mike. We could point out the road, con the local road conditions, and let V Trans make their own determination. Mm -hmm. Say that we don't have any particular objection, just but just so you're aware. Mm -hmm. I think they're already aware of it. To tell you the truth, I don't think we have to tell them. It's a state highway, so they they're, they're going to be aware of it. I, I would just stick with my original one that we have no objection. And let the state figure it out. Then that, that gets into how much um, weight they're going to give our local analysis of, or our analysis of lo what local conditions. I know they know what it is. I would feel much more comfortable saying we leave it up to them to make a decision based on the safety of the to the vehicle, all vehicles on the road, including the ATVs. That sounds a lot better to me. Yeah. Well, I won't withdraw it. 
And we have a second. That's right. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Nay. No. Okay. We need three nays. We need three yeses or no. Oh, no, it'll die if you don't get three. Yeah. Yeah, right. So, what next? As it stands now, we have no response to that. What was the language you used? That we uh, leave it up to the state based on? To decide based on the uh, safety of the uh, motor vehicles on the road and the ATVs. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. You know, I think what that does is it leaves it so that if there ever is an accident, you have, it was none of your decision to do it, to say okay. It was none of Johnson's decision to say it was okay. With you saying there's no objection, that means you're not saying yes or no. But when you're saying it's up to the state to make the determination whether it's safe or not, You've, I think it's made it so we're not res in any way responsible for the, st the state would have still made their own decision what what we say or not. Yeah, but I'm saying if there was an accident. Well, well, I don't. Yeah. I don't have to win on this. So I'm going to vote yeah, for it. Yeah, I just I. Yeah. So. Just because of ATVs on our on Collins Hill. I know. I know. Everybody has to be. Yeah. I'm, I'm in favor, obviously, of this, yeah. but I, I will say that it's a, I believe it to be an important corridor for, for the ATV usage to connect. It probably ends up being a connection to uh, uh, Watermill and Bakersfield, you know, yeah. um, things like that. Because oh, of, um, that's right. Ten to one says everybody's doing it already. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. So, all those, any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Thank you. Um, no, no, no. Okay. Let's see uh, data gap analysis. Yep. Maybe there was. <laughs> so uh, we've we're kind of at a stage um, where we're ready to start looking at the next steps. That we've got a certain amount of analysis done. Um, uh, if you recall, the data gap analysis was a, a less formal uh, brownfield study that would look at, um, we asked them to look at the old mill house, uh, the town garage, the village garage, and cold storage. Um, when they have looked at that and worked on the study there, uh, that allowed them, they weren't able to do a level one uh, brownfield study because uh, that would require the whole examination of the whole parcel. Uh, and that examination of the parcel would include all of the hundred plus acres back we have in the woods and everything else. So it would be a, a very large and expensive study. Um, so we did the data gap analysis. The data gap analysis is coming back saying that the old mill house is likely to have very different conditions on it than the garages do. Um, this is a letter addressed to me from Leah Kilvadieva and Kurt Mueller. Um, and Kurt Mueller is who? Kurt Mueller uh, is the consultant from the Johnson Company. Uh, so our environmental consultant on this project. Um, his suggestion for moving ahead and next steps is to uh, begin the process to uh, subdivide that area and create a new parcel that contains just the old mill house and whatever land we might we think is appropriate for the old mill house. Um, that creating that subdivision uh, will allow them to complete a formal level one study and if necessary a level two study on the old mill house. Okay. Um, that, let's see. Yeah, they think that the old mill house is going to have different contamination levels, uh, that it really would be a different case than 
including the garages or the, the cold storage. Um, so I think it's worthwhile to divide that and focus our efforts on that one property at this time. Also that one property, um, that and the cold storage were the two we identified as being uh, kind of somewhat likely if we were to really see development in that area on town and village owned properties, those two being the two most likely candidates. So this is coming back and saying that that one in particular is the most likely of the locations we saw. So if we want to keep moving along that, kind of the next step is to look into creating a subdivision uh, for the purpose of then being able to do formal study. So what do we have to do to, to create a subdivision? That would be probably a talk with our attorney about uh, subdividing the property. How would we divide the parcel? Define the parcel. We that's we would have to do that. Um, I think a pretty good division right now um, would be along the lines of the fence that's there right now that separates the garages. So we'd have to get a survey out to mark that and get the exact exactly where that uh, separation is. But could uh, Kurt suggest what what? What would be an appropriate uh, boundary for this? Maybe we should ask him for that. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Of course, the first step would be to, before we go to an attorney, is to uh, discuss it with the village trustees. Yes. Um, uh, since it is jointly owned property, uh, we would need, kind of right now, all we can do is an agreement in principle that we're interested in something like that. Right. Um, we would seek something similar from them, either in a joint meeting or in a separate meeting that they're interested in that. Uh, their attention right now is focused on the uh, powerhouse next to the yeah. school bridge. Yeah. Right, yeah. Um, but the, these well. don't draw from necessarily the same funds. Mm. Uh, they're both brownfields, but they're, there's enough money to do both studies. Uh, yep. They're not going to use the same consultants. Uh, it, it, it's we can do both. I'm I'm our representative to the LCPC Brownfields Committee, which is just an advisory committee to LCPC. Yep. So I, I would really suggest, because the trustees are focused on um, the powerhouse, that we ask Mr. Mueller what uh, what he would define as, and then we we get a definition and we bring it to them and say, how about uh, we proceeding with this, you know, will you agree with that? You know? um, it's, uh, I, I recommend before we do anything, we talk to the trustees, just in the, in the spirit of open communication and total transparency with them because um, it, it's, a, it's a difficult, been a difficult relationship and, and we need to work extra hard to communicate with them um, just to in, in the interest of repairing you know, the divide bridging the divide and maybe their attorney would work cheaper too <laughs> but you know and we and we should have a joint meeting with them pretty we were gonna have a joint meeting with them tonight but it should be in the next couple weeks right so I, I would suggest that the other thing I would just want to point out is that we have a uh, on that property installed uh, a pretty good investment in the uh, generator for the uh, town garages is right in, just in the backyard just behind that building so that would be an expense a consideration in, in moving that or you know a factor when we talk about subdividing it. Mm -hmm. Legally that could be an easement. Uh -huh. Sure, I, I just want to not be in some division. But, there are a lot um, of options there. I just want to point um, out that it's there. I think, it, you know, I guess I'd argue for the position I had previously stated, which is that I think sometimes when you, you bring a proposal to someone, you it's easier for them to respond than to create a proposal at that point in time, you know, and agree on what it is, you know. Mm -hmm. Show us this, you know. We're thinking about this, you know. It doesn't have to be, but what do you think about this? Uh, and you kill the pharaoh? What's that? There's no kill the pharaoh. We don't have to have this done yesterday. We could wait till we had our joint meeting. 
right? There's no yeah. deadline on this. This, the, this money is going to disappear from LCPC. Oh. If it's not spent. There, there is, there is a, 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 there is a time period for which that we've got some time, but we've got an extension for, for spending this money. Um, How much time do we have? Now I'm trying to think of that. It might be September. Okay. We'll have our meeting long before that. Uh, we've got a higher cut. And it's a process. Yeah. How about if we have Brian have a discussion yeah. with Meredith? There you go. Uh, 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 about it, and, and if there is some encouragement there from from Meredith, we proceed so they're yeah. not, not blindsided. That good. works for me. That's great. great idea. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Yeah. <laughs> Solomon. Uh, That's what you get to pay the big bucks for. <laughs> Oh, look. All right. Who wants to read the net? Oh, no, I'm sorry. The local emergency management plan. So I'm not sure if you're looking at the sewer, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The sewer. yeah. I wouldn't miss that for That's bifocal. I couldn't tell. It's bifocal. So All right. the local emergency management plan. Um, this is an annual update. We've got a couple phone numbers that we have to fill in on this. Uh, but it would be helpful to have the board's approval for Eric to sign this. Uh, Don't move. <laughs> Is there a second? Uh, we we adopt house. virtually the okay. same thing. The form has changed this year. Okay. Uh, there is a secondary form that would be good to have the board's approval for also, and that's uh, to allow our emergency management plan to be shared with other communities uh, so that somebody else can crib from our notes when they're writing their own. I'll add that to my motion. Second. To both. To both. Any discussion? Whose trees are us? Uh, the uh, tree trimmer that the village typically uses. Oh, okay. Where are they out of? They're nearby, but I, yeah. I couldn't tell you where they're. They're not Johnson, but they're Hyde Park or Morrisville, or because well, there's good tree removal here in Johnson. But if that's what they use, that's. Uh, I. They have a standing. They have an existing relationship with them, so. Uh, I would like to say that uh, in my hat now, while Eric's gone, I've been dealing with. Uh, flooding, questions related to that. I arranged last night for the um, Sheriff's Department to be checking on the river during the night and to call RJ and myself for Gordy and I talked to everyone this morning uh, from talking to RJ and Gordy about the um, uh, Sterling Market and what they knew and what their process was. I decided that I should go talk to the people at the Sterling Market and so I talked to Bobby Gillespie and Paula and a couple of the other people circled in as soon as I was there and found out what I was talking about. If we had had a flood last night, they would have no monitoring, they would have nothing going on, they wouldn't have known, and I said, I don't think it can be that way. So I tried to loop them into this process uh, and saying, you know, telling them that last night it wasn't necessarily the case that the, the Sheriff's Department would have called us, but I arranged for it to, to happen, for people to be there. Um, and I said, you people ought to be in this same loop. So this set of phone numbers and contact information would be you know, very useful. It should, they should have them, and our people should have their numbers, for instance, Bobby Gillespie's cell phone, you know, because she's the person there. So, you know, we had a major, a major item that was not in the loop. I don't want to say clueless, but mm -hmm. they would have been helpless. You know, it was, it was just a guesstimate um, on their part that it wouldn't happen. You know. So. I would say um, Jane Draper should probably be post office. The post office. Yeah. She, yeah. She should those, be in that. You know, those are, you know, those are our, our uh, canaries in the mine shaft. Yeah. You know. How about we should be sitting if we're going down that road then um, or yeah. librarian as well. Yeah. Yeah. So we should uh
to the stepchildren? Probably, you know, th this is, you know, that that's, I guess I'm deviating from this question, but these are important, not tangential, but other contexts that should be brought into that. Yeah. So, with regard to the motion, uh, all those in favor, favor say aye. 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 Well, this is why it's good to have you live looking, you know, yeah. every so often because ah, you think of things. That's okay, Doug. I don't want to do this. We don't talk. Is it really? Yeah. We had it. It's not that surgery or something. That was for the frost and the side. People were tripping. They were catching their toe. Oh, no kidding. So that was put there to keep people anyway, so aware. Well, I don't have to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll have this adopted. I'll look at sharing something like this with uh, some of our partners, our original partners, uh, looping them in so that they know who to contact uh, and can better communicate with them. Where is that document, Mr. Chairman? All right, the uh, signing of the East Johnson sewer transfer to the village right. of Johnson. Oh, East Johnson sewer oh. I've got it here. Sorry. Thanks, Linda. <laughs> so this has been warned. Uh, what does it take to just to sign it, take a motion to sign it? We've already approved signing it. We've we? already approved signing it. Uh, sign We've had it warned that we're going to sign it, and it's been available for review, and we've had no comments. Um, so we're ready. Um, we have a notary Rose, right under the table. Yep. Yeah, Rosemary will be our notary, and uh, signing John Hancock. I did. Good idea, Doug. How is one readable? One that's readable? <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> this has been a long time coming. It's a great day. Uh, similarly, uh, Johnson, thanks, yeah. we don't have anything to sign for the adoption of the enhanced energy plan, uh, but we warned that. We had our public comment section, and uh, we didn't adopt it after our public comment session. So. Uh, it's appropriate for us to adopt it today. So I'll move. Second. Mm -hmm. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Opposed? No. The ayes have it. The noise ordinance for waiver for the Loyal County field days. Um, I'm going to have to get with Susan to get us a copy of that to sign. Um, we've received it, but it's not in my mailbox, so I've got to look for it. Um, so that'll be moved to the next meeting. Or you can authorize me to sign it, whatever your preference is. So moved. I authorize Brian Story to sign a noise ordinance waiver for the Mall County Field Days of 2019. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Is that, did I hear your vote? Yes, aye. Okay. The ayes have it. All right. Um, the next item, let's see, the Evergreen Lake Cemetery. That's I've got a couple of comments on that, but I really think that we should cover that with some correspondence from our attorney in uh, executive session. Let's do the, uh, so everyone has the Sheriff's Department report. Yeah. You received that by email. email. Um, Nat, I believe you wanted to make a couple comments about the, uh, maybe not this report of the Sheriff's Department, kind of issues and concerns. Yeah, I just wanted to note that they've been very busy responding to um, drug opi opi opioid activity lately. Um, been quite a, a spate of uh, overdoses that have been uh, uh, revived with uh, naloxone, uh, what's it called? Narcan. Narcan. And, um, you know, with the subway um, sandwich shop being robbed the other night with mix, I 
kind of almost assume that it's related to the drug activity that we're seeing. Um, so it, it, to me, it feels like we, we're really, um, it's kind of a, it's a, it, it's a crisis. And uh, I really don't have a great idea of how we should be responding to it, but it feels very much like we um, need to be uh, working on it. Um, and I, I commended Brian for stepping up to um, volunteer for the Governor's Opioid Council, uh, Coordination Council, which we hope that he gets appointed to. Um, the individual must have been pretty desperate because they just very little cash today, like mostly debit cards and credit cards. I mean, At the subway station? Yeah. You know, and he had a knife, I guess. Uh, that was his weapon. Yeah, there's a video of that. Oh, there, there is a video. Surveillance video. But, um, Do you know of anything more on that yet? No. But um, anyway, uh, Roger's trying to put together a strategy on it. It's not entirely a law enforcement issue, but um, largely it is, I guess. So it's on the record. OK. Um, light Industrial Park update. Uh, no real change on this. I'm working on the application for the Northern Border Regional Commission. Uh, the EDA, uh, the EDA application is, uh, if you recall, that has a rolling deadline. Uh, so that one's one I was, I've been working on for a while, but uh, with it not having a specific deadline, it's a little easier to get put off for a little bit. And so we're back on making sure that we get into the northern borders before that deadline is up. Um, Which is when? Uh, I hesitate to say, I, I don't recall off the top of my head, but it's okay. soon, uh, weeks. Okay, it will make it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not worried about making it. Um, I want to have a draft relatively soon so that I can uh, go over this with uh, Seth. Uh, also, uh, Brand, the town manager in Fairfax, uh, recently completed an application exactly like we're doing with uh, combining EDA funds with Northern Borders funds. Uh, and he was able to successfully combine those two grant applications. So I want to uh, run my application or our application packet by him in addition to Seth. And will we have to approve that, or does it have to be at a... I believe that the, that you've already asked me to seek that grant okay. uh, for this purpose, so I, I don't think that I need specific approval, but I, just I, mean, I will send you the application packet when it's complete. I was just wondering in light of meetings and, you know, yeah. signatures and things like that. That's a good point. Uh, I will make sure that if we need a specific approval rather than just a uh, representative, that you'll have the opportunity. Okay. Uh, old business is number 14. Uh, not much progress on, on any old business this week. Uh, okay. Let's, uh, How about the conflict resolution training? Now we're going to have some in house stuff for that. That's the plan. That's been the bank's burner for a little while, and I really have to move that ahead uh, and make some progress on it. We should get that done in sooner than later, I would think. I missed what, what you called it to start out with conflict resolution training. Okay, yeah. Is there a motion with regard to, well, do we have any, have I missed anything? I had the Fiber Committee, Vermont State, Vermont Studio Center, um, 35th anniversary, and uh, Evergreen Ledge uh, discuss, cemetery discussion in the executive session. So that's the last one I have. Is there anything else? Uh, we've also had the additional Vermont Studio Center noise waiver uh, for the 35th anniversary. This will be Saturday, June 8th. Second. 
Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. All right, is there a motion with regard to executive session? So rule, Mr. Chairman, I don't have the VSA. Uh, I don't have the statute in front of me, but it's the purpose is for uh, confidential communications with our attorney. Yes. Second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, we are going into executive session at uh, 944.